presenting Marsha Hunt and Marjorie Reynolds in Flightness on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Better things that include DuPont nylon, DuPont cellophane, DuPont plastic. Later in this program, we'll bring you the DuPont story of the week about the 101 interesting jobs that coated fabric, products of chemical research, are doing in the war. There is a sisterhood of young American women in this war, which has won an enviable reputation for glamour. The sisterhood of flight nurses. But there is more danger, more hard work, more heart pain in what they do than glamour. Our play tonight has caught the danger, the heartache, the tension, the occasional smile or laugh that sparkles in a flight nurse's memory. Our stars are two of Hollywood's most charming young actresses, Marsha Hunt, who is one of the stars of the metro Golden mayor picture, Music for Millions, and Marjorie Reynolds, who will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Bring on the Girls. DuPont presents Flight Nurse, with Marsha Hunt as Pat, and Marjorie Reynolds as C on the DuPont Cavalcade. On an airstrip near Lingayan Gulf, one of our most costly beachheads in the Philippines, a C-54 transport plane squats heavily, its four motors idling but ready. For the flight crew knows how real is the danger that may bring Jap fighters on a sudden raid over the field. Now, at this moment, a flight surgeon stands with two flight nurses and a medic by a row of 20 stretchers, each laden with its important burden. In each, a wounded American bound east to base hospital. The surgeon is a very tired major. Uh, which of you is Thompson? I am, sir. And yours, Skidowski? That's right, sir. Well, I'm sorry if I don't make too much sense. I'm tired. Tired? Who isn't? You'll both have your hands full on this trip. You're for Guam. Guam, yes, sir. At least you won't have to do too much high-altitude stuff. And that's good. There are at least a half a dozen chest, head, and eye cases in this lot. I've seen this head. It'll require special care. We know our jobs by now, sir. Well, what's the matter with you? You're pretty edgy, too, aren't you? Well, she's all right, Major. It's just... Never mind. It's just that this is her last trip. Oh? She got her application in to go back to regular army nursing. Skip it. Skip it. We've got work to do. Where's our medic? Right here, Lieutenant. Sergeant Hutch. Okay, Sergeant. Get the litter bearers working. Okay, Lieutenant. Now, that man there, Fleischman, he's a combat fatigue case. Combat fatigue? Yeah. Our instructions were no nervous cases. We'll have our troubles enough. Those instructions were those. At base hospital in Guam, sir. Oh? Well, that was Guam. This is Lynn Guy and Flightman goes. But, Major, you don't understand. He goes, Pat. Right. Hey, Sergeant. Yes, Lou? That's an abdominal you've got there. Put him somewhere in the middle where we can get at him. Yes, ma'am. There comes your new flight crew. Hope they're good. Hey, I know that face. Oh, no. Not again. What do you know? <laughs> the fun-loving rover. Gee, hiya, baby. You are part of Johnny? All the way. Pat, this is Johnny O'Hanson. Hello, Captain. What? Hey, Captain Johansson. That's right. I rated salute, and I better get it. Oh, Pat, I haven't seen this guy since I was a stewardess in the States, and... Oh, look at you. From hairline to air corps. I think I like you better than that. <laughs> when old home week is over, maybe you'll help me get our patients settled. If you'll come with me, maybe you can check how we're loaded for the flight. Huh. Who put the bug in her ear? Mm, me, I guess. She wants to quit flight nurse service, and I've been riding her for it. I'll tell you about it later. I've got to get to work. Yeah, you and me too. See when we get upstairs. We leave soon, I hope. As soon as we can. Oh, that's my cue now. We see you. Okay, let's make it happy. Take this off, Saddle. Yep, get aboard. Well, I'll say goodbye, Thompson. Good luck. Thank you, Major. Hello, well, good afternoon. Stick with him, Major. Okay, Sergeant. Lock it up. Well, Pat, here we go again. Night. Night. Yes, right here, soldier. Are we flying yet? Not yet, Captain. Uh, you see, this is my first time in a plane. You can't tell me anything this big can fly. Well, it'll fly, so you take my word for it. Uh, is it a military secret where we're going? Not to you. We're going to Guam, the base hospital. Guam? Is that all I was there just last November? Well, any law against going there twice? Yeah, but Guam! For my money, it's a sand pile. Strictly a sand pile. Yes, 
Georgia? How's my pal, Fleischman? Oh, the redhead boy? Yeah. He ain't said a word for hours. Well, we'll take good care of him. Don't worry. How's it with you? <laughs> I feel better just, just watching you. What's that, your knitting needle? This'll make you sleep. Steady. There. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Wake me up when we get home. That's right off of Staten Island. Ah, yeah. Everything under control? Why not? I'm going forward for a second. I want to say hello to Johnny. Hello? I thought you said that once. Yes, but you don't know how glad I am to see Johnny. I'll be right back. I hope. There's a lot of work to be done. Hello, Johnny. Oh, hello, Dilligan. Wait, I'll take off these earphones. I can't stay up here long, Johnny. There's some sick kids on this trip. Huh? Give them my compliments and tell them I think we're going to have a nice, tough ride. You kidding? No. Oh. Navigator reports there's sticky weather up about four hours. Maybe it'll blow over. You can dream, baby, but this won't blow over. Does that mean we'll have to get altitude? May? Just remember, Johnny, we've got some soldiers back there with head, eye, and chest wounds. It's supposed to stay around 8,000. I hope. Hmm, looks like Pat and I'll be busy. Hey, what's the matter with your sidekick, anyway? She gave me another one of those off-the-shoulder cracks a few minutes ago. Mm, she got a letter from her boyfriend. Oh? You know, one of those... Dear Pat, I guess it was all a mistake, Larry. Oh. Captain? Yeah? Why does it 11 o'clock? Oh. Get back to your patience, Steve. Those are Betty's. Betty? Jack? Yeah. You got a chaplain back there telling him to start praying. Oh, I'll be praying myself. So long, Johnny. Pat, over here. What is it? I've got a secret for you. Jack plane. Three of them. Oh, fine. Have a look at the corporal up front. We have a head wound. He's calling. Right. Hey, nurse. Right here, I couldn't help hearing what she said about Jap Plane. Well, keep it to yourself, Jap. But, but our Red Cross marking. Not us. This was a war plane going in. We don't raid hospital markings going out. As if that would make any difference anyway. Uh-oh, here they come. Cross the fingers. What What can we do? I wouldn't know, soldier. That's his job up front. But take it easy. Hey, nice. Yes, can I help you? Yeah. About that sand pile. Yes. I take it all back. Sand pile or no sand pile, right now I'd settle for anything. I see what you mean. Wow. Yes, I am listening. Wait a minute. See? See, what happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, they're gone. I, I'll go ask Johnny. I couldn't see. Here he comes now. Hey, Johnny, the Japs, what about them? Where'd they go? Oh, didn't you see? No. They ran into some friends and decided to stop and talk. Ran into some friends? Yeah, some Hellcat friends of theirs. About five of them. Boy, oh boy, love those Navy pilots. Any hot coffee back in the tail? That's Hoskins, the medic. You pick it up. Okay, thanks. Um, Ski, that storm I told you about. Yes? It's an hour away. Blowing nice and pretty, the navigator tells me. How do you like that? He shakes off those japs and he's as cool as Christmas. Oh, no fooling, Pat. Isn't Johnny some guy? Sure, I guess so. I guess he'll do. Hi, soldier. Huh? I said hi. All right, hi. Oh, you want to talk? What are you going to do with that needle? Just thought you'd like a little cocktail before the caviar. Don't bother. I'm not hungry. How's it? How do you feel? Go ahead. Why don't you say it? How's your leg you were going to say? Or were you going to say, how's your stump? Don't worry about your leg, soldier. They've got ways to fix you up. Why, you'd never know the Sure, difference. sure. I ain't buying any of that. Oh, tough time. Come on, now. This will make you feel better. I feel fine. Me and my stump. Leave us alone. After this high Is that an order, Lieutenant? If it is, don't bother. I ain't taking any. Do Robert he just talk? Here, that pillow doesn't look very comfortable. It'll do. Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped your letter. So what? Would you like me to read it to you? Let me read it to you. It'll kill you. Don't even need to read it. I know it by heart. If you'd like to? Dear Dave, she wrote to me. Dear Dave, this is the hardest letter I've ever had to write. I'd rather die than do this to you. Don't. But the truth is, our engagement's impossible. That's enough. Here, you, you better let me... I could have sent that piece from the knee down and cut off me. Remember me, bye. You're talking too much. After all, it was nice of her to write. We usually wait weeks for a letter. You'll be able to fix things up. You'll be seeing it soon. 
That letter from a pal of mine in the same mail. He's married already. Well, I... I guess you got a right to be, soldier. Hey, let me give you this hypo now. It'll be good for your pain. Not what I need it for. Hold still now. Think I'll get a decoration? The order of the busted heart, maybe? There. He'll be all right now for a while. Thanks. Hey. Hey, you know something? Hmm? It's a pleasure to be in the same plane with you. We're not only in the same plane, soldier. We're in the same boat. Pat. Pat. What now? Johnny wants to see you. Captain Hampton. Aren't you company enough for him? Oh, don't be that way, Pat. It's important. Well, what does he want? It's about the weather. If you had his job and the navigators, I've got my hands full back here. You know he wouldn't ask you to come up for nothing. Has she been awfully touchy lately? Not that I don't understand. Let's skip that, do you mind? But you still have a job to do until we land in Guam. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go talk to you, Hansen. But keep an eye open. I'll be right back. You want to see me, Captain? Yeah. You know it's getting heavier every second. Yes, he's got all the patients strapped in. We need to do more than that. It's the real weather we're flying in. If we weren't already four hours out, I'd say we should go back. Oh, well, we can't do Don't that. Don't get excited, Lieutenant. We're not going. But we are going to have to climb upstairs, try and get above this stuff. Upstairs? How far? We're at 7,800 now. I don't know where the top of this is, but I'd like to try as high as 10,000. You can't. We've got cases back there. Test and test. I know, I know. That's why I'm talking to you. So? So you've got plenty of oxygen containers back there, haven't you? Yes, it is. So. And you better get ready to give a lot of plasma to any guys who go into shock when we start going up. Captain, it's too dangerous. Listen, Lieutenant, if we go up, a couple of your patients may have a very tough time. I know that. But if we stay at this level, all of us will conk down. Now, take your choice. And while you're thinking, take a look at that meter. The storm is driving us up right now every minute. Can't you hold it? In a wind like this one, Lieutenant, you're lucky if you can hold on to your hat. <laughs> Lieutenant. Oh, good. Listen, Sergeant, get out all the oxygen bottles and have them ready for use. Are we going up above 8,000 with these test cases? We're over 8,000 now. And Sergeant, you better keep those bottles last fast when they're not in use. It's going to get even bumpier. Okay, Lieutenant. Something banging around now, here. Find out what it is and pass it down. Okay, Lieutenant. Pass. Pass. Yes. This test case here. The Captain Burnham. Yes. I'm afraid he's going into shock. Oh, all right. We'll give him plasma. I'll get it. Oh, hurry, Dad. Oh, I hope he's the only one. Me too, but there's a... Hey, look out! Good Lord, what was that? Bumpy, isn't it? That was our medicine set. Knocked right out of its brain. Well, just a minute. I'll help you. No, we'll leave it. Have to leave it now. You gotta get to that shock case. Where's Hoskin? Right here, Louis. Everything's fastened down. I want you to help me with plasma. Listen, you'll never be able to give plasma when she's bumping like this. You've got to. Look at him. But you, you can't do it. Go forward and find out how long we're going to fly this high. That's your hunch. Right. And now, Sergeant, let's start with that plasma. Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Oh, hello. Do you have enough to do in your department? She wants to know how long we're going to be this high. Oh, she wants to know. We've got one case of shock now. Well, you can tell her I don't know whether we're going to be able to stay at 100 feet, let alone 10,000. Price is higher on number two engine, Captain. Gee, you hear that? Yes, I heard. That means on top of everything else, one of our engines may come. So get back to your boys and keep busy. When I get time to play for it, I'll let you know. Listening to Marsha Hunt and Marjorie Reynolds in Flight Nurse on the DuPont Cavalcade. Sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Here is Act Two of Flight Nurse. Starring Marsha Hunt as Pat and Marjorie Reynolds as Steve. Four hours away from the bitterly contested ground around Lingayan Gulf on Luzon in the Philippines, the C-54 transport plane is fighting its way through a sudden whiplash Pacific storm, laden with a fragile and cherished cargo. Twenty wounded American soldiers and Marines. 
But the four motors of the transport, at the moment, are laboring in vain to keep the plane on an even course to Guam, four hours away. Hey, you've got half that five skinny more already? I gotta say it, Lute. I wouldn't have believed it. Stop. You gotta stop. See, somebody's calling back there. Here I go. Stop the plane. Stop. Take it easy, Flashman. I can't. I gotta stop the plane. They're coming. Get back. Get back. What's the fuss? It's Flashman. Another case. Get back. Didn't you give him a hypo? Sure, he's been asleep. Put that fire out. Somebody please put that fire on. Hurry, sir. The captain see the fire. It's coming through again. Get another shot ready. Shall I send a medic over? In case. He's got to be with the plasma. I'll handle it, okay. Because this boy may start showing himself around. I'll be okay. Go get the creditor. Okay. Put that. Put that. Boy, what do you want? It's all right. Can't a girl take your pulse? Oh, it's Terry. What happened to Terry? He'll be okay, too. Terry, look out, Terry. They're coming down. Look out. Steve, hurry up, will you? Hey, nice. What's the matter? What happened? Nothing. Get back to sleep. Don't he want to go to Guam, neither? They got him. They got Terry. Back in bed, Fleischman. Back in bed. Sergeant Hopkins. Let me alone. I got to get to him. Terry said I got him. Let me out. Let me out of here. Well, let's take it easy. Better be ready, you. Here you are. What are you doing? Get that needle away. Let go of me. Oh, here, back in bed. Okay, Sergeant. Let him alone. I'll be able to get him. But this guy's liable to start some Believe trouble. me, let him down. Who's that? Please, please call my arm, will Listen, you? Fleischman, Terry needs your help. Terry? Sure. Sure anything for Terry. Yes, sure. Listen, Red. Before you can help him, you've got to help yourself. You know you've got malaria? Malaria? Him? Yes. You notice how weak your head gets when you sit up? Yeah. It does feel funny. Well, that's malaria. But you'll be okay, only... Well, you don't want Terry to catch your malaria, do you? Terry's my pal. So let me give you some of this medicine, hmm? It'll kill those malaria germs, and then Terry won't catch anything from you. Germs? Okay. Okay. Hold his arm, Hudson. Got him. There. Now, now we'll sleep. <laughs> Optimistic, but... No, you're right, Pat. I think it's calming down. I can use some of that. What a time we've had. How long has it been? Oh, less than an hour. Say, I, I think I'll go up front and see how things are with Johnny. Gee, not again. I'll be right back. Uh, Lieutenant. You want something? My, my mouth's awful dry. Oh, all right. I'll give you some water. Here, but drink it slowly. You've been shaken up a lot, and it might make you sick. Thanks. I guess we're being scared at the first thing. Oh. Well, the worst is over now. We'll get to Guam in just a little while, and then all you have to do is rest. But, but don't you get scared, too? Me? Sure, I do. Plenty. All the time when the gaps were coming at us, and when the weather was so rugged, I kept watching you. You were fine. I was busy, that's all. If I had to just lie here like you boys do, I don't know how I'd take it either. And what I mean is, well, ever since I got in the army, even back home in training, I've been scared. I sure wish I could get over it, but you know, I guess there's something wrong with me. Right now, I'm nervous. You want to know a secret? We're all scared. But how were you in the fighting? Oh, I killed some Japs, all right. Oh, well, that's all that matters, soldier. As long as being afraid doesn't keep you from doing your job. Hey, nice. Uh-oh, my problem's child waking up. Nice. Right here, soldier. All right, no kidding. I know, I know you don't want to go to Guam. Well, um, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it might not be so bad if you're going to be there for a while. Oh, well, don't worry, soldier. You won't be in Guam long enough to think about that. You mean we won't be staying there? Uh -uh, not long. You'll be shipped to the station a week or two. Well, now that's more like it. Johnny. I rode 100,000 miles with him on an airline back in the States. He's all right. See, you got an extra bobby pin. All this talking around. Look at my hair. Come on. Here. Thanks. Hey, hey. Yes? Why are you doing that? Stand this way a little, huh? Well, I'm doing... Yeah. Yes. Hey, and a girl sticks bobby pins in her hair like that. God, it's been longer than I like to think. What are you doing awake here? You're supposed to be sleeping, soldier. Oh, I've been awake a long time. I, um, 
I was trying to get a chance to tell you I'm sorry about cracking the tour there with you a couple of hours ago. You mean about that letter you got? Yeah. Well, that's okay. I know how you felt. I got one of those letters myself a week ago. Yeah, I figured that. From what you said. You know, you're lucky. Lucky? Sure, you got a way to forget. With me, it was okay so long as I was busy, you know, with the pussy-gling guy and on the first day fighting. Put the edge off my own trouble. Till I got it in the leg. Sure. But it feels funny. Place for my leg used to be. I get to thinking. Thinking about her again? I had it all figured out. I was going to go back home and sit in their front yard and then spend the rest of my life feeling sorry for myself. Well, not now, sister. Not now. What made you change your mind? You. Me? I've been laying here watching you. Fleischman and those other guys. You say that guy's lucky? Well, three years practice, you could do the same thing yourself. That's why you're lucky. You've had the practice. Now you can do it. You can keep busy all the time right here in these planes. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you might have let your letter get you down. Gone right back to your soft civilian life or done something crazy. Like I would do. What makes you think I wouldn't? Of course, I gotta say, with me, it's a little tougher still. My leg. My ex leg. But even then, I don't figure you for the kind of girl who would've let that pop. What makes you think it wouldn't? You? <laughs> the way you've been working? Listen, Lieutenant. You're a lady. Right out of the sky. I'm going to have to change the dressing. See if you can find me a new leg, too, while you're at it. That'll be a little tough these days. Yeah, I know. There's a war on it. Sandpile sure looks good to me right now. Yeah. You better tell your Lieutenant Thompson to see that all our guys are sat down nice and comfy. We're going down. Okay, Johnny. And I'll see you tonight. Pat? Yeah. We're landing, Pat. Everybody sat down. Hawkins is checking in now. How about it, Sergeant? Oh, good, Lieutenant. We're nearly down. Oh, boy, feel that. Johnny sets it down like a feather. Hopkins? Yes, Luke. These two birds, him and him, right to the hospital and fast. Okay, Luke. You can open up now. Right. Well, soldier, this is it. What do you say? A sand pile, strictly a sand pile. <laughs> Hello there. Anybody home? All presents accounted for, sir. How was the trip? Well, we flew through the air, but I wouldn't say it was with the greatest of ease. There was a little weather at sea. Well, that's why we told the sergeant to get these two cases out to the hospital first. They're chest wounds. Right. By the way, which of you two nurses is uh, Thompson? Here, sir. Oh, well, I've got your orders here to send you on through to Hawaii. You should be able to get a plane within a couple of hours if you want to leave that soon. A couple of hours? <laughs> After a year of this stuff, I guess you can use a leave. I've only been on seven months. You see, sir, this is Lieutenant Thompson's last flight, flight with us. She's resigned. Resigned? Oh, I must have things mixed up, I... Never knew you girls did resign. You've got things confused, all right, sir. Well, now, wait, Pat. I, I know you're tired. We all are, but that's no reason for you to... Sure, I'm tired. Why not? But we've got work to do. What are we waiting for? Well, what about that resignation? I was never any good at writing. The whole thing was a typographical error. Huh. So I'll be ready to make the next trip to Lingayan, sir, whenever you want me to go. Glad to hear it, Lieutenant. Besides, I just remembered I, I forgot something in Lingayan. Forgot something? Yeah. I forgot there's a war on. Our thanks to you, Marsha Hunt and Marjorie Reynolds, and to all the other members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade. When the pilot of a B-29 over Tokyo gives her the gun, he does it with a carburetor a lot bigger and more complex than the carburetor in your car. 
In the carburetor of the B-29 is a diaphragm that automatically corrects the flow of high-octane gas, mixing it with air in the right amount. That diaphragm has to flex and change position just the right amount in just the right way every time the pilot touches his throttle. What's it made of? Metal? No. Cloth. A fabric woven of DuPont nylon, coated with DuPont chemical rubber, neoprene. That's typical of the jobs being done by coated fabric. Hidden away where you never see them and never think of them, and still accomplishing things no other materials can do as well. Mankind has been using fabrics for centuries. Coating them, however, is a development of modern industrial chemistry. Coating a fabric gives it entirely new qualities. Coated fabrics are made which reproduce the appearance of the finest leather for women's handbags and shoes. Or which, for another example, offer you a better window shade material, like the Pontine washable window shade cloth. Coated fabrics are used in 101 ways in war. DuPont nylon ponchos, shelter tents, are coated white on one side and green on the other. So they'll be hard to see against snow or against the evergreens of the mountains. There are rainproof, mildewproof, termite-proof, jungle hammocks, and army and navy raincoats and all-weather jackets that stand the cold weather of Greenland without cracking and the hot, damp climate of the tropics without getting sticky or gummy. When soldiers ford rivers, they button inflated bladders of coated fabric, like small air cushions, inside their shirts to keep them afloat. Life belts are made of coated fabric. So are life rafts. And the chemical containers that change seawater into fresh drinking water. Scientific research has two aims. To create new things and to improve old things. Adding new and valuable qualities to old materials. Here in the development of wartime coated fabric is a double example of what research does. Fabrics are an old friend. Several coatings developed by DuPont were unheard of, simply didn't exist only a few years ago. Add them together, fabric and coating, and you have an illustration of the value of research. DuPont research that brings you year after year an ever-growing list of better things for better living through chemistry. During the month of March throughout America, the Red Cross will conduct its 1945 war fund campaign, and as a salute to the great work of the Red Cross, we will present on the DuPont cavalcade a very warm and sincere tribute, a play called Bernadine, I Love You, a story of one of the little known but tender and human services of the Red Cross. William Bendix will star in this home away from home tale of a paratrooper's inarticulate love for his bride of only two weeks. Listen next week when we'll present William Bendix in Bernadine, I Love You on the DuPont cavalcade. Music on tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. This evening's play was written by Charles Rabiner and Peter Lyon. This is Jane Whitman inviting you to tune in next Monday to Bernadine, I Love You, starring William Bendix on the DuPont Cavalcade. Brought to you by E.I. DuPont, Dinamores and Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.